everybody. It is Monday morning and I'm a little bit of a hot mess right now as I usually am on Monday morning. So, you know, <laughs> nothing new here. I am about eight chapters into those once forgotten. Yes. Those left behind, those once forgotten. I keep getting the, <laughs> the titles mixed up in my head, but I have to say I'm really, really enjoying this second installment from NC Scrimger. That's, I believe that's the way it's pronounced in the audiobook. And uh, like I said, I'm really enjoying it. It's picking up right where the first book left off. And I've said this before, and I feel the need to say it again because I just watched Nico and Andrew's self pub recommendation video. And if you have read T.A. Bruno, <laughs> if you've read the books that are directly behind me right here, uh, yes, read and see, <laughs> because I think Nicole does a fantastic job of capturing like all of the great sci-fi things that we fall in love with. Great aliens, great world building, uh, just as T.A. Bruno does. And so I'm, I'm like super pumped to have both of these people in my red books because they're so great. They're so great. Um, I don't have much to say right now because NC also does a lot of what T.A. Bruno does in building the story. So at first, there's not a whole lot for you to talk about. There's not a whole lot that's changed or shifted for you to explore. And I do like stories that build that way. So I'm, I'm very, very excited, like I said, to see where this goes. And having been a favorite for me in SPSFC. I definitely am wanting more and I know that there is a third book and the audio is in the works for that as well. So very, very pumped. Anyway, one thing I want to say just for my current state of mind and the current way I am feeling about certain things, I am dying for some spooky season reads. I've been reading fantasy. They've been amazing. I've been reading sci-fi been amazing. However, my stack over here of horror, grimdark, uh, gothic, those kinds of things is being completely ignored. And I'm like, oh, I really, really want some more spooky season raids. So moving forward in my roles, I am going to try and see if I can shift what I'm picking. I know that there are certain things that I can't avoid. Obviously, this last one was highest rated book on my TBR. And so it, it was this book that couldn't be avoided unless I fudged the rules a bit and went with the highest rated horror on my TBR or highest rated thriller, what have you. But <laughs> I am feeling the desire to pick up something a little scary or a little tense. Um, and you know, like the, tis the season we, we need to get on it. So I don't know when I'm going to finish this. Um, today we should, I should have quite a bit of reading time today, but we have some errands that we have to run and kiddo is doing a bit of a shift in schooling. He kind of fell behind, but not his fault. <laughs> and so it's been a little bit of trial and error with homeschooling and now we're kind of back to reevaluating what we're doing. So yeah, but I'm still really excited for the fact that this month has gone so well. I'm very excited to have picked up some fantasy series that have been waiting for me. I also have been trying to finish series this year. So starting some new ones has been really fun. Obviously this is the second book in a series. So I am continuing a series with this one, but yeah, I mean, that's all the updates I have for you right now. And like I said, I'm hoping that my next role will give me something spooky, something scary. Yeah. <laughs> I will check in with you guys when I get further into this book. I don't know how much of an update I will have for you upon completion of this book because it is the second book in a series. So I don't want to give too much away. But I will definitely let you guys know how I'm feeling about the series, you know, two books in and stuff like that. And I'm also very excited because I just watched Nala's video and she's very eager to pick up a shadow crown. So there might be a pause in the Spookopoly to pick that one up if I can't draw it 
And I know that's fantasy, but it's a little bit darker fantasy. And so I think that will uh, settle well in my brain for what it's currently wanting. But yeah, I will see you guys in the next clip. Uh, riding on a haunted hayride. Yeah? Yep. Are you scared? Yep. Yeah? Yep. You think it'll go okay? Yep. Okay. Maybe. We'll see. We'll see? Yep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Alright guys, here we are. I'm still only eight chapters into those left behind. No, those ones forgotten. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm going to confuse these titles for forever because they're so similar. But I'm not feeling sci-fi right now. I'm just not I'm enjoying the book a lot. But my brain is saying I want spooky vibes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and roll for the next book. And I'm going to try and like switch off reading whatever book I pick with the sci-fi that I'm reading and kind of switch it out so that my brain is satisfied and I'm not falling behind in the readathon. So let's do that. Okay. So let's see. Here we are. Oh, this thing will not stay on there. Highest rated book on my TBR. That is currently the book I'm reading. But we need to roll for something else. So, how we go? Four. One, two, three, four. 300, a small book. This is actually going to work out quite well. Let's see. Let me show you so you guys can see. 300 right there. Small book. I actually have the perfect book in mind for this already because it is one that I have been dying to get to that I have put on TBRs before and that would be Comfort Me with Apples by Catherine M. Valenti. So I could just listen to this today and put this on my Spookopoly, check it off the list and then get back to the sci-fi because this is, let me see, 103 pages. Oh, but it's 103 pages, so I don't think it's actually going to qualify for my King Clue. Ah, uh, that sucks. That's okay, that's okay. This will get me the spooky atmospheric vibes I've been needing, and it won't take too much time away from me actually completing the sci-fi book I'm reading. So I'm very, very excited about this. Ooh, we have lost the light. <laughs> So I just finished Comfort Me with Apples and let me tell you, if you like lyrical writing and horror, maybe some religious themes thrown in, Stepford Wives kind of vibes, you need to pick this up. I really enjoyed it. Now I can't say it's the, my like favorite novella I have ever read, but it does make me want to read more from Catherine and Valenti and see what else she has to offer because writing. Oh, I loved the writing style of this. And, um, I mean, that's about all I can say because it's 107 pages, guys. There's not a whole lot for me to tell you other than what I just did <laughs> and that I really enjoyed it. But this didn't quite satisfy me. Like, I'm still in that spooky mood. So I am going to go ahead and roll again. Okay, so we are a rat. Oh, I need to find something else to use on here. But anyway, right here at small book. Let's roll. Five. One, two, three, four, five, eight. Green book. Now let's see what I've got. Okay, I am just going to bring you guys over here and go through the books. Let's see if I can find a green one. Oh, that's like yellow though, right? Like a neon. Eh. Okay. So in my spooky season stack, I don't have a green one. I am going to check Libby and see what's available, possibly scribbed and see what's available. And I will let you know. <laughs> 
Okay, happy enough and funny enough, uh, I did come across a book that has green on the cover. Now, I'm going to stretch it a little bit because obviously the cover is predominantly black, but the other predominant color on the cover is green, and I'm going to be listening to Nettle and Bone by T. Kingfisher. Now, I've been wanting to read this for quite some time. I love T. Kingfisher. I've read just about every T. Kingfisher that is horror. Now, I have not read all of T. Kingfisher's like fantasy and stuff like that, but definitely the ones that are in the horror realm. So I am ready for Nettle and Bone. <laughs> Completely ready. Life of a doggy mama. He thinks he's Nettle, but he is not. He is not little at all. Jake, he's a boss. Hi, Twiggy. I'm just gonna stay asleep. I can't get up. Hey guys, um, so I do have a little bit of an update. I am still about nine, ten chapters into uh, those once forgotten. I'm enjoying that book. I have been feeling the need to pick up spooky books like left and right. So I am slowly working my way through the sci-fi that I'm currently reading and I'm currently on two audiobooks. So this is very strange for me <laughs> switching back and forth between audio. Um, but I have to say I am insanely disappointed with Nettle and Bone. Now, I love T. Kingfisher. I have so many of her books just around the house, but I'm really starting to understand my taste as far as T. Kingfisher goes. So I read Thorn Hedge not too long ago. I had it as an ARC and uh, I, I'll say ALC, Advanced Listening Copy, because I had an audio arc of it and I enjoyed it, but I was really missing that humorous writing style that T. Kingfisher has in her horror. So I was like, okay, but it's a dark fairy tale and I'm loving the dark fairy tale aspect of it. Just not what I was expecting. Now, here we go with Nettle and Bone and it's a bunch of the same, like the dark fairy tale aspect of it. I don't think T. Kingfisher writes dark fairy tale very well. And I say that having read quite a bit of dark fairy tales and stuff like that. And I, I'm finding Nettle and Bone very boring. So I don't know if at this point I'm going to DNF it or continue with it. I don't want to DNF it because it's going to apply to both of the readathons that I'm currently participating in. But I have to say, if I wasn't in a readathon, there's a good chance that I would DNF Nettle and Bone and you know, something all of this whole time, you know, my love of T. Kingfisher and everything like that, uh, something has always told me don't buy that book. And I don't know why. I never knew why. <laughs> but I think like something was telling me I wasn't going to like it. And I, I should have known, given the people who do like Nettle and Bone, that there was a good chance I was not going to enjoy this one. But I do think her fantasy is probably not for me just the way she writes it and everything like that. But I still really, really love her horror. I love those books. Absolutely love those books. But yeah, like I said, Nettle and Bone is not doing it for me. So I'm kind of right now resting at a three star with it, even though I'm saying I don't like it because I love her writing style. So her writing is always going to get a high rating from me. I like her characters. That's always going to get a high rating from me. So those two things alone lend me to believe that I will likely give this book three stars regardless of the rest of it. But the plot is not there. Um, there is an underlying plot to the story that I can see, but it's not significant enough for me to be invested. And I get where we're going, but I don't care. <laughs> Uh, we're we're kind of just watching this girl watch her sisters be abused. That's 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 kind of where we are right now. And I'm I'm just like, 
I don't think that this is a book for me. I just really don't. But, and then, you know, obviously the final uh, piece of the cop pile system is enjoyment and I'm just not enjoying it. So I can't see this getting any more than three stars, even though there are elements that I really do like about T. Kingfisher in general. So it's just not what I wanted it to be. So much confusion and don't know where to go from here. If I DNF, I'll obviously roll again, but it won't count towards either one of my readathons. So that is where we are right now. <laughs> I will check back in with you guys later. Okay. I don't know if you guys can believe this or not, but it is only Tuesday night, Tuesday night. Who is she? Who is she vlogging every day and checking in when she's supposed to? I don't know. <laughs> okay. So, um, nettle and bone. Let's just talk about that for a second. I'm going to give this book three stars. I really feel like T. Kingfisher's fantasy is just not for me. I don't know what it is about it. I think I go in with very different expectations. I think it's a me problem. I don't think it's a T. Kingfisher problem. I want the humorous horror. I, that's, that's what I want. And I'm just, I'm not, I'm not getting that. So I kind of, I, 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 three stars. It's three stars, guys. I'm just going to say it. It's three stars. I like the atmosphere. It wasn't like the best atmospheric book I've read by T. T Kingfisher, so I liked it, but it wasn't great. Characters, I liked them, but they weren't anything great. Uh, plot, I, yeah, I, I didn't really, I didn't feel like it had a plot, but you know, there is some underlying plot in it, and I just felt like it was sloppy. <laughs> That's the only word I can come up with for the way that plot was executed. I realize this is a very well-loved fantasy book and that I love T. Kingfisher. So this should have been like the book for me and it just wasn't. And so I'm kind of just glad to move on from Nettle and Bone and I don't have to talk about it again until my wrap up. Also, my allergies have been a little wicked these last few days. Um, not that I need to go into detail about that, but if you can hear all of that stuff, I do apologize. But I guess that means we need to roll for our next read. So I'm going to be a little scared of how long this vlog is because I know I've read a few books already, a few books already, and I know that we are only on Tuesday and I'm currently reading another book. So let's just roll and figure it out, shall we? I am also kind of figuring out that I need two tripods, one tall one and one mini so that this doing this is not so difficult. Had a green cover. So that is where we currently are. Let's roll. 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Daphne du Maurier. Should I just read Rebecca? I mean, it's tempting. It's tempting. <laughs> you may be unaware that that is one of my favorite books. Um, that beautiful copy was also sent to me by Izzy for my birthday. However, there is a gothic that I really want to get to. And it's actually on my list. That would be The Path of Thorns by A.G. Slater. Now, I read All the Murmuring Bones last year. Really, really loved it. So when I saw that a gothic fairy tale was coming out by A.G. Slater, had to pick it up. What I can tell you about A.G. Slater is lyrical writing. If you are looking for a author that has that beautiful gothic writing style, A.G. Slater. <laughs> and I'm just so excited for this. I've had this since it released, which will it tell me? June of 2022. And I still haven't read it yet. I've kind of been saving it for spooky season. Not exactly intentionally saving it for spooky season, but yes, I'm very excited to get to this. Oh, update on those left behind. I did read another couple of chapters today. I'm really enjoying it. Like I said, my brain's just not in the mood for sci-fi. So I keep trying to switch them up because I really love that story. I really think it's great. And again, favorite of SPSFC. So I'm not seeing any current flaws with it. I just not in the mood for sci-fi. So we'll get there. We'll get there. I just need to kind of change it up so that I don't slump or I don't end up giving that a bad rating just because it's not what I'm in the mood for. So, all right, I will update you guys when I get further into the path of thorns. Hey guys, I am back. So I'm going to try and record some videos today. I don't know if I'm going to get it done. I don't know how good it's going to be because 
if you guys can't hear it, my allergies are on top of me. So, um, I'm having a little bit of issues with that, but I do have a couple of videos that I have been really eager to put together for you guys for like, <laughs> it's been a while. It's been a while. I've been on this year long journey with romanticy and stuff like that. And then I've got a couple others that I wanted to do before the end of the year. And anyway, um, the path of thorns. This is what I have been craving. This is it. 100% the book I have been craving. This is exactly what I've been wanting. I love it. The writing is great. The atmosphere is fantastic. Of course, can't expect less from a gothic novel. Gothic is usually very atmospheric, very creepy. And this is one of those that like you're not exactly sure what's going on. And I think Mexican Gothic did this really well, where you were just a little unsettled because you weren't sure what was actually happening. And this one is just kind of picking up in that same vein, The I just can't tell what's actually been going on here. So, I mean, <laughs> that's basically what all anybody has to say about this, is that it is lyrical, beautiful, and creepy, and kind of vicious. <laughs> but yeah, like I said, loving it, loving it. Um, I do need to record something. It's been very difficult with schedule changes and everything like that to sit down and record something other than these quick clips for vlogs, but I am going to try and get that done today. We shall see how that goes. Obviously, but you can tell by looking at me, I'm tired and I'm tired because of my allergies. It's giving me a little bit of a headache, a little bit of a stomach ache, a little bit of a growl. So we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> All right. I'll check in with you guys later. All right, guys. Hi, it is Thursday morning and I have just finished the path of thorns. I absolutely love this guys. Five stars, five stars. <laughs> I love A.G. Slaughter's writing. I, it, it's so lyrical, so beautiful, and her stories are pretty dang dark, but I really loved all the twists and turns in this because this is one of those stories that you're not immediately let in on everything that's happening, but you guys know I really enjoy that. I really do, especially, you know, my love of like T.A. Bruno and stuff like that. Um, but also just my general love of Gothic novels, they tend to start out very ambiguously. And so oftentimes we don't know what the real horror is until much later. So I love that. I really love that. But yes, this is going to go onto my favorite Gothics list. <clears throat> But that does mean we need to roll again. This vlog is going to be so long, so long, because I have read so many books. Let's get the board. All right, we were on Daphne du Maurier. Ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Pumpkin Spice. Read a spicy book. So I definitely know what I will be picking for this. It's easy, 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 because I need to continue this series and I have the audiobook. So I'm going to be reading the next book in the Bre the Bridge Kingdom series, trying to combine those two words somehow, <laughs> but I'll put an image of it up here so that you guys can see the title and everything like that. I loved the first book so much. I really love whenever you can do romance and fantasy, both in equal measure and have it both be great, but if you don't know what the bridge kingdom is about, it's about a girl who is raised to be an assassin and her father has trained all of her sisters to be assassins. And then he is to choose one to send them off to this land, marry the king and steal their secrets and then kill him. That's, that's what they have been raised to do. And so she goes to this kingdom 
meets the king and everything like that and starts to learn more about the people and the king himself and realizes maybe what she had been taught, what she had been led to believe during her training as an assassin might not be correct. And things go from there. But the ending of the first book makes me need to know what's happened. So I will be starting that very, very soon. And then I will check in with you guys. This vlog has to be so long because I've read so many books, so many books. <laughs> Hey guys, it is like 2 a.m. and I totally <laughs> just stayed up and read <laughs> or listened to all of the Trader Queen. <laughs> it happened. <laughs> so I think I've talked about the Bridge Kingdom before. Also, my allergies are about to like make my voice give out. So I'm going to try and run through this really quickly. But the Bridge Kingdom is about a girl who her and her sisters are raised to be assassins for her father, the king of this nation, and they are going to send one of them to uh, marry off into a kingdom that they want to overtake, and the daughter is going to get the information that they need and then kill the king. That's kind of the premise of the Bridge Kingdom, and it's obviously like an enemies to lovers romance and stuff like that. So we, we know she finds out that her dad is a horrible person and told her lies, basically just brainwashed her and filled her with all of this, this lies and this hate and stuff like that. And so this is book two, which is the duology for the two. I don't know if I should count this as a finished series because it is six books with three duologies in this series, uh, three different couples that we follow, but <laughs> this book was amazing. <laughs> it had its issues. It had its flaws, but I could not put it down. I needed to know what was going to happen next and it jumps time. So if like that bothers you, I could see this probably not being like your favorite romantic or anything like that, but this one jumps time quite a bit, but it does that in order to progress this war that has begun at the end of book one but anyway it it's it was great and it's 2 a.m but i need to know what my next book is going to be so we're going to go ahead and roll also i mentioned that um i have a tendency to wear star wars pajamas this is this is the first time you guys are probably seeing those <laughs> okay so we were on pumpkin spice here let's roll six one two, three, four, five, six. There's nothing I do better than revenge. I've had this already. Uh. Uh. So I do have a few that have revenge plots in them, but I'm like, I'm not feeling fantasy right now, sci-fi right now. Uh, so, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll again and you guys know that means I have to roll for two books. So let's do that. <laughs> and doubles. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now what do I do? Do I pick three? I'm not really sure. <laughs> uh, okay. One, two, three, four. Highest rated. All right, guys. This is my video <laughs> this is my readathon well technically becca's readathon and i'm fudging the rules because if i have to pick three i'm gonna pick the three highest rated horror on my tbr and i will let you guys know what that is tomorrow because girl is tired but yeah the three highest rated horror on my tbr will be added next <laughs> Good Lord, <laughs> what have I done to myself? Guys, um, I have my three highest rated horror-esque books. And the funny thing is that all three of them are YA. So <sighs> I will be reading three YA uh, this next week because I'm going to have to end my vlog here. But Best for Teen is what I'm going to be starting with. And then As Good as Dead by Holly Jackson and House of Roots and Ruin. So 
I'm actually very interested in all of these books, so I do think that I will enjoy them um, and update on those once forgotten, almost finished with it. I'm really enjoying it. I don't think I like it quite as much as the first book, but it is really action-packed, guys, really action-packed. And I've been wanting something that's spooky and a little unsettling, a little bit slower paced, you know, the fall vibes. And that's not <laughs> what those once forgotten was, <laughs> is, <laughs> but I, I really enjoyed it and I'm really enjoying this series and I'm really hoping that the next one is just as good because I, I've really loved it. Also, it's 7 a.m. So I'm, I'm, I'm like barely awake, but I wanted to come check in with you guys and kind of just give an update on where we are. Um, uh, and also I needed to upload this and I didn't want to leave it on a roll that was incomplete or I hadn't picked the books. So yeah, these will be the next three on my list. If you guys would like to follow me on any other platform, I have a link tree link down below and I uh, hope you guys have a wonderful day. Bye.